Good morning, folks. We've got a number of space weather items to hit today, including more solar eruptions. We're going to blast through some big science updates as well, and we are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star proceeding from the southern eruption we saw yesterday, and as the turning continues, at the end an eruption releases on the north. It was another filament and appears to be headed northward as well. The eruptions are sparking slightly higher flare marks on the X-ray charts, and the coronal hole stream has arrived in the solar wind. That's the signature there in the solar wind leading to the rise in purple plasma speed. It is a minor impact and we've only got a bit of geomagnetic instability. Looking back at yesterday's southern eruption, it was a two-component CME that NASA's Enlil spiral shows a minor impact for coming tomorrow night. Should be about as powerful as this coronal hole stream is. Before we get going with the articles, I want to let you know that viewers who don't know what I look like tried guessing which one is me in the photo I shared yesterday of Observer Ranch long-term members who already live in town. Guesses included everyone except Catherine. And for those new here, I am the guy in the shirt calling out election fraud, next to the pretty Vietnamese girl who happens to be our CEO and my wife. Anyway, good news to kick off the science today with the Great Barrier Reef annual report, and it's a big win for the coral. All the coral numbers and proliferation indices are growing, while the numbers of bleachings and crown of thorns starfish outbreaks are down. Full report has a ton of information at the link below. We missed this paper from back in June. We've recently seen that both the reunion volcanoes in the Indian Ocean and Hawaii are connected to the LLSVPs. And now, we know they also reach up to Canary and some of the other Spanish islands in the Atlantic. Rock Art Anomaly up next. They are finding evidence of pig domestication drawings going back past the Holocene to about 45,000 years ago, which is long before domestication was supposed to have taken place. You see them fight with themselves in the paper over the data versus what they imagine must be impossible. Impossible unless humans have risen and fallen on this planet before. Up next is a nod on top of the dozens of papers identifying the problems with blaming humans for megafaunal extinctions. Once again here, they can't put the blame on humans for major losses during an exact period where they think the Gothenburg magnetic excursion happens to have taken place. Veteran observers. The only reason Wolf 359 isn't listed among Barnard, Proxima, and AD Leo in the list of nearby stars outbursting is because we only had the one study saying it had a super flare. This is now confirmed with its activation continuing, super flares now occurring regularly on the fifth closest star to ours, and indeed, it's in the direction of the galactic center. As you saw yesterday, we are in the midst of another data run on Earth's rotation. We jump a bit faster again in the prediction update today, and we're seeing if they come back here in the upcoming days to wipe the data for a fourth time this year. Lastly, folks, if you haven't seen the Phoenix Protocol, it's probably one of my coolest videos from the last few years. There are animals that don't age, some that can revert to juvenile state and start life again, some that can die and come back better adapted through cryptobiosis, and humans. We have a way to push our natural clocks as well. I'm doing the Phoenix Protocol during the Saturn opposition on August 2nd. Maybe some of you would like to join me. Watch that video. We greatly appreciate your support. Today's article links for all those stories are below the video in the information box. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.